Oh, yes, it sure is. We're coming to you live from the greatest country in the world, broadcasting on location at CPAC. It is Fox Across America with your main man, Jimmy Fallon. And you know the way the show works is normally at the top of the hour, I do some big flashy monologue that really blows everybody away. Wrong. Well, uh, <laughs> we're going to make an exception to that rule uh, because we have some Fox News royalty joining us now. This woman was last seen with myself on The Gutfeld Show in Dallas. We're two of the only people who made the TV on Gutfeld this week. Kaylee McEnany in the house. Give it up for Kaylee McEnany. Thank Yay. you. I had to put in earplugs during the Gutfeld episode because I, man, I had to like go to confession after hearing your comments <laughs> on were, Gutfeld. There were some things said on the Gutfeld taping that might not have been admissible at the regular Bible meetings, but it was <laughs> Gutfeld. It was Dallas. We play it's loose Gutfeld, ball. It's Gutfeld. It's Dallas. I thought you were telling me you had to put in earplugs because my shirt was too loud. It was. So. Yes. <laughs> okay, I, don't too. Have, I don't have to take this McEnany. I open the hour with you. Who's no, tougher to on you, you, Gutfeld or me? Well, you want to know something? Gutfeld just took a critical blow in the last last hour, Byron Donald stopped by to say, I'm the best dressed guy in cable news. And you want to know something? If you were backstage, uh, and I know you were, after the Gutfeld taping this week, a pretty prominent executive in the company came into the dressing room in front of me and Double G and was like, I love your shirt. Yes. And I'm probably banned from his show now. <laughs> He's going to be so mad to kill them. Me, you know, have... you say you like someone's shirt when, like, you have nothing else to compliment them. So oh, that might have been it. I'm kidding. Hold I'm kidding. On, yo, I gotta, I'll, yo. Get her out. Get her out of here. Even, tr <laughs> even Trump's I'm mad. totally kidding. I, I love you. you no, I, I like the tough love. This is amazing. You're, <laughs> you're saving me a trip to the dominatrix tonight. This is actually great. But anyway. <laughs> Kaylee McEnany in the house. You're just joining us. Happy CPAC. You just did outnumbered from CPAC. I did. Is it not so much fun because it's so different than what we're used to? You have like a crowd. It's like it's almost like playing a professional sport. It is. Look, I mean, I started the week at Gutfeld where there's this massive yeah, audience, yeah. Uh -huh. like so energetic in Dallas. Then mm -hmm. hop on over to Orlando, Florida. I mean, yeah. the energy, the conservatism. I told you you wouldn't find progressivism here at CPAC. And, <laughs> well, you want to know why? This is the thing. I was talking to Byron Donalds about this. We are now somehow, we are the party of fun. Yes. We're a good time party. And you know how they say in life, like, your attitude defines your experience? I think that's the biggest divide between the two parties right now is, like, victorhood versus victimhood. Yes. Victorhood, we can do it. We're the best. Victimhood. All oh, the deck is stacked. Systemic everything. And I just think it's such a terrible way to go through life. And I'm going to go out on a limb and, you're, and say you're raising baby Blake with victorhood in mind. No? Yes. I mean... Look, I, I think I've told you this. I think I told the Gutfeld audience, like, one of her first words was mask. I mean, how sad for a childhood that, that like, this is, she only knows COVID-19. And, yeah. I mean, yes, I'm raising her to be in an environment where, guess what? You get to go to school. You don't have to wear a mask when you go there. Mm -hmm. And you can enjoy life. And I think there's going to be a generation of millennials who wake up and, though they're traditionally liberal, say, hey, you, you stopped my college. I miss my college years. I miss my young professional life because yeah. you closed down businesses. Think about that. Although... I to some extent, if you miss a couple of years of college these days, it's probably the best thing for you because you hate the country a little bit less. That's true. <laughs> you owe a little bit less money for yeah. that gender studies degree. Yes. And I'm not here to disparage gender studies majors. They are some of the finest baristas this country has to offer. <laughs> They're making wonderful coffee at Starbucks after they graduate. But if you're just joining us, Kaylee McEnany is here. We're down at CPAC. We're on location. And I do think we spoke about this a little bit uh, on Gutfeld the other night. One of the worst things that ever happened to Joe Biden which is what they assumed would be one of the best things, which was getting Donald Trump off of social media. But it really was uh, done, it became such a detriment to Democrats because we're actually focusing on the substance of their leadership. And uh, I don't know if you heard, Kaylee, it's not the best. No, I look, they, there was an Axios article out this week. Mm -hmm. You read it, yep. I assume. Oh, I assume well, you read the rundown the before you go on the I'm, I'm more, show. I'm more of a pictures guy, but yeah. Okay. I was there. <laughs> well, well, you heard about it yeah. if you were listening and paying attention. <laughs> um, you know, Democrats can't find their boogeyman. It used to be President Trump. That's falling flat. So they decided to target the MAGA base. They've thought about Ron DeSantis. What does this tell you? They don't have like a, a proactive, positive agenda. They have to find a bad guy to defend the guy in the basement. And that, but that's the whole thing. It's like if you're running for office, not on who you are, but against some other metric, that's an admission that you have nothing. Right. You know, if you, everyone's heard the story of like someone setting you up on a blind date and you're like, is he good looking? They're like, really nice guy. You know what I mean? How's he look? A oh, wonderful personality. He's hilarious. And they're clearly avoiding the fact that he looks like a circus attraction. That's Joe Biden's record. It's not pretty. So they don't want to talk about the look of the record. They want to talk about, well, could have been the other guy. And I think we're at a point now where everybody sees through it, and we're in a bad spot. And, uh, you know, not speaking as like a conservative, just speaking as like an American who roots for the country. Like when Ukraine happens and you hear someone like John Kerry 
saying like, hey, if you could please think of the environment while you're bombing civilians. Right. Like, uh, that, that we can't be taken seriously. You know what I mean? Right. It's crazy. And that's my bigger concern is that we miss the type of leadership that people respect. And I think the Democrats have given us a huge opening if uh, the party doesn't screw it up between now and 2022. So your job is to keep all these leaders away from the bar for the next couple of hours. <laughs> I love that that's my job on Outnumbered. Well, no, yeah. <laughs> well, you, have an, you have an authority, though. Like, they'd, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't listen to me. I, I think they would. All Look, right. Jimmy, I got to tell you, you are so right. You mentioned the blind date. I mean, think about it. America basically is still on a blind date. You know, I mentioned the basement a lot, and I know we're past the campaign. But we elected a guy who we didn't know what he stood for. I mean, there yeah. were only two debates. He found his way out of one debate, tried to get out of two, using COVID as the reason. We heard from this man for very scripted amounts of time, very small amounts of time, perfectly woven together from the comfort of his basement as he wanted it to be projected to America. He wasn't out on the stump, out on the campaign trail, being confronted by voters. Mm -hmm. We're still on that blind date, and we're suffering failure because of it. It is. It's it's, it's very scary. If you're just joining us, Kaylee McEnany is in the house. We're at CPAC. Uh, Lisa is filming us. Hi, Lisa. I see you. There's a lot of cameras flying around. There's a lot going on. Pictures, carrier pigeons. Somebody's doing card tricks. It's a fun place. I see a donkey over there. There's a donkey over there. Uh, And it's the one thing I can't uh, emphasize enough about people. If you've never been to CPAC, if you're on the political fence, because a lot of people who listen to the show are. Because, you know, one of the hooks of my show is if you listen to me talk for three hours a day, you come away from it assuming you too could get a nationally syndicated talk show. So a lot of people are here for the empowerment. They're like, well, I think that guy (laughs) is getting paid in Tide Pods and cheap tequila. Maybe I can get a gig too. But the truth is, a lot of you are getting a first glimpse into what CPAC is and what the conservative movement is. We really are the optimists. We really are the people who love the country, believe in American excellence, and root for the country regardless of whether or not everyone in this country agrees with us. We're not the people that want to ruin you or deny you the opportunity to make a living if you don't agree with us. We are, for all intents and purposes, I hate to say it, but we are the cool kids. We are. We are. I mean, there's no, you can't argue that we're not because, again, the other side of this is the guy who wants to take your job away, who wants to get offended at a joke you told five years ago. You're never going to be at a party and go like, oh, I can't wait till the guy who gets offended and everything shows up. Yeah. And that's who we're against in this moment, which by default I think makes us cool. It's right. Um, you know, CPAC, if I could sum it up in one word, it's passion. Uh, I've been coming since I was in college. I went to my first CPAC. I was literally a kid in college at Georgetown University. I consider myself a nerd. I take that <laughs> with, a, with a badge of pride uh, because I was just obsessed with politics. And I went on over to CPAC. It was in Washington, D.C. or just outside of Washington, D.C. And I found a whole lot of people who love this country, who take days out of their schedule to show up. Uh-huh. And we are the cool kids. In addition to CPAC, you got to get down to Turning Point USA when Whoa. the station goes there. Whoa. Because those are actually kids. There's kids here, too, but it's all kids. <laughs> but there's the thing. They're totally cool. My, my producer, Mikey, isn't allowed within 500 feet of a school. Oh, and I would, then we've I got would, problems. I would imagine that extends to school <laughs> trips. You know, there's a reason we can only have Charlie Kirk on over the phone. <laughs> it's like, Charlie, we'd love to have you in person, but Mikey's ankle bracelet's going to go off. What are you doing to Mikey? Uh, Man, Mikey, I'm doing nothing. Nice I'm trying to clean up his act over here. Yes. No, we love Mikey. Like Mikey's you. the best. He's a legend. That was low. No, it was. That's what this whole show is low, Kaylee. It's a good time. We just said we were the fun people. Um, let me ask you this. As Kaylee McEnany, you know, because you said you've been coming to see CPAC since you were a kid. I would imagine the reaction to you being at CPAC has changed a little bit over the years. Only a tiny bit. I mean, I was a very well-known junior at Georgetown. (laughs) You know, did a couple of big keg stands. I had respect on campus. (laughs) But uh, coming here now, uh, having played such a vital role in, in such an important and historic and consequential presidency, does it give you, like, more pride or on some level, are you, like, prided out? Are you exhausted? You know how they say people who work weddings for a living actually hate you on your wedding day because it's just, like, another day? Have you gotten more of this political Holy Spirit or this American Holy Spirit? Or on some level, would you admit it's just you and me talking? Nobody's listening. Uh, <laughs> have you come back to earth a little bit? No, I, I got more of that spirit. You know, not to get all emotional on you, Jimmy. But She's going to sing Lee, I, Lee Greenwood right here. She always right, does. Whenever right I give here, her wine. Right here, right now. Yeah, the wine's under the table. we got some Sauvignon <laughs> Blanc, Kim Crawford. No. <laughs> but, um, you know, I had a passion and a love in my heart and, you know, the work ethic to put the bones behind all that. And, you know, that's why I went to CPAC as a college kid. And you'll walk around here. You're going to see kids from all over the country mm-hmm. who they are here. They're yes. not out, you know, doing keg stands in Costa Rica over the weekend and oh. partying. You know, they're <laughs> at CPAC because they, they're they the same, you know, little Kayleys or, you know, little whomevers that little are going to grow Kayleys. up to have a, wow. a, a, a great role in, in this movement. So. If there are a lot of little Kayleys, it's a good time to invest in a vineyard. 
buy yourself a winery? I yeah. kid. You're the best. But no, I do think, and I, I love talking to you about this, because we have interesting stories, completely different ones. Uh, but the point is, we represent, you know, the modest successes that we've achieved, everything that's great about America, mm -hmm. is we were not here. To everyone listening at home, we were exactly where you are person listening at home. We had ambition, we had a work ethic, but b best of all, we had America at our disposal. And this is a system that can be gamed endlessly in terms of upward mobility if you just want to work. And that's the whole key to America, is we live right now, for all the people disparaging it, this is the most tolerant and inclusive society in the world. It's just also the one society that offers an unlimited possibility of life. And I think we just need to get back to that core message because a lot of people are selling a version of America that doesn't exist. Like, we're the rich kids who don't get why everyone yeah. wants to hang out at our house. That's yeah. the Democratic Party. They're like, why does everybody want to come here? It sucks. Yeah. And I'm like, well, have you been to their house? Because it's right. not here. You just know? look at what's happening in Ukraine and those yeah. poor people taking arms to defend their country. And you look at the blessings we have here um, and the opportunities we have. You know, I came, I was very blessed, the family I grew up in, but they weren't involved with politics. So my, I make that point to say, um, though I was blessed to have a great mother and father, you know, I made my way in the political world and you're going to meet people here who are going to do the same. You know, future press secretaries, maybe a future president in here, mm -hmm. future radio host pundits oh. i mean these are kids with passion in their heart these are adults with love for their kids and that's why they're here and that's the american dream that you can make your way um, despite not coming from a political background or if you came from humble beginnings make your way in this great society every day every day what kaylee is saying is there are so many people in the position you the listener are in mm -hmm. that are making an incredible life for you for themselves and yep. that's what i think we should be focusing on more than anything is uh, there is an opportunity that exists in this country that really gets taken for granted. And I think the reason our party is achieving, really, and I think the reason we're so poised in the midterms, aside from the fact that, you know, Biden is polling behind the Omicron variant, I mean, he's not doing the best right now, yeah. uh, is because we speak to that spectacular possibility of life. And yes. I think that's the gig. And, and we have freedom. And here's what's scary is when you get to a point in society, it was Reagan who said, freedom isn't passed along in the bloodstream. Well, that's clear because there are people who are describing using the term freedom with the trucker yeah. protests uh -huh. as far right. There are people, CNN said they're fighting for freedom, whatever that means. Um, <laughs> well, we see what, what, what happens when you start to devalue freedom, when you don't stand for it. We got a bunch of freedom fighters out there in Ukraine who are standing up for the freedom of their country. It doesn't come free. You can't take it for granted. Yep. It's not going to be here every day. We live in... The, one of the freest countries on earth, but we got to defend that and we have to proclaim it. So spot on true. And uh, honestly, like your words have inspired me so much that I would run for office. Thank you. We'll accept it. They do this us. thing. Yeah. Well, the, and plus there's this thing called the background check. <laughs> so that's uh, one of the shortest campaigns in history. Uh, but Kaylee McEnany, this was epic. I, I could add to that rap sheet if I could tell them some of the crimes I saw you commit in Dallas. Yo, things went on in <laughs> Dallas. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm not proud of that behavior. Yeah. But again, I mean, listen, it was an open bar. It was. And, and, and uh, you know, you bring it, this is the thing I don't understand. And everybody standing here can attest to this because most of you have met me by now. Am I not like the most normal person in the world? Okay, I'm very normal. And so as a normal person, when someone like, oh, the former White House press secretary invites you out for a drink, <laughs> I don't know that it means a drink. You know what I'm saying? Like she's literally going to have a drink. I'm showing up with a funnel and a toga on because that's what I come from. So I'm at this party with Kaylee and the cast and all the executives. And, you know, they're having one drink and like talking about the news. And I'm like, who wants to go on my slip and slide? Out of control. <laughs> so, yes, if this is the last time Fox ever lets me out in public, I, I appreciate you being a part of it. Hey, I had multiple drinks. I just do to stack, not stack the cups, throw them under the table. <laughs> <laughs> Pro so. move. Kaylee Mack and 80. Hey, did you ever have a wine before a White House press briefing? Lord knows you had one afterwards. I can say I never did. Really? Yeah. Well, you... It would have made the Acosta, you know, conversations <laughs> all that more fun, though, right? <laughs> well, probably, spicy. The, probably the only way a woman is talking to Jim Acosta is if she's got a few in her. So you might <laughs> be one point. of the rare exceptions. There you go. Kaylee Mack and 80, the legend. Happy CPAC. Thanks for this, babe. Happy CPAC. Thanks.